Welcome to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast, where insights, attitudes, and methods for success get illuminated. Learn what leaders and change workers have done and are doing now to create magnificent futures. We interview great guests who inspire you to overcome obstacles and achieve your goals. Be sure you visit our website at self-helpcoaching.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, just relax as you listen. You can do something else, but be ready to make an important note. And let's get started. The title of this interview is Optimizing Well-Being with Your Own Creativity Coach. And we'll be talking about managing anxiety, finding motivation, creativity, and a, and a creative life. And our guest is Nafeli Sotarillo. And I hope I said that right, Nafeli. Nefeli. Nefeli. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for having me. Yes, very yes, good. absolutely right. She, she lives in New York, but she's in Cyprus right now, which is very cool. <laughs> and is that where you're from originally? <laughs> I was born, raised in Cyprus, but of course, I'm a, I'm a citizen. And uh, I've been living in the United States over the last 21 years. That's great. I, I've interviewed someone else about a few months ago that lives in Cyprus. He was a, he was a very good personal development person and and for everything i've researched about you so are you and we're going to be talking about about that so let's talk about the new things in in the industry of mental health there is a new trend for remote behavioral coaching she she has had the opportunity to work as a behavioral coach in the pandemic for able to in New York City, that's capital A, capital T, able to in New York City. She was a generalist in mental health, dealing with the practical day-to-day -day needs of the client. However, her training in psychology is in creativity coaching. And I love that, by the way, we'll get into that. <laughs> she is the life coach for the artist, the filmmaker, and the creative professional. Her background is in teaching photography and filmmaking courses for over 21 years. There is a big need for coaching nowadays. People find the support handy to accelerate specific results in their lives. Now about her past. She is committed to the arts. She committed to the arts at a very young age. Nefeli Sotarillo played the mandolin and earned degrees in film and media arts and in photography. For over 21 years, she taught art courses to all ages 5 to 89 years old. Her creative work is in the film producing of narratives, the family genre, certified in creativity coaching and with work experience in mental health as a behavioral coach, Nefeli helps filmmakers, screenplay writers, photographers, musicians, and other creatives from the performing and visual arts to move beyond limitations to the totality of possibility in life creativity, and well-being. And I love all of that. Welcome. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for having me. I'm appreciative uh, to, to be at your show. You're quite welcome. And, uh, you know, I also am a creative type, even though, I, you know, I was, I was a life coach and now I'm, I'm really an entrepreneur. Uh, but, uh, and, you, know, well, you, you know, I'm the head of a tech, we, my company is a technological coaching company. We're releasing a, a, an app that's going to revolutionize self-help and personal development. It's going to be part of the success revolution. Uh, but I, I'm an entrepreneur, but really I identify most as an artist. That's who I am at my core. I am an artist. To me, I see life as art. I see what I do as art and I strive to be the better artist. Maybe I should start thinking I strive to be a better entrepreneur. I would do better, but I see myself always striving to be the better artist because to me, life is art. Yeah, I, I saw your podcast and, and your resume is quite impressive. Your life experience and all the business experience is quite impressive. And, uh, you know, I'm an, I'm an actor, even though I haven't done anything in a while, but that's really my greatest passion is acting. And, and I, I was a musician. I used to sing. I used to sing in a punk band, even though I was a terrible singer, a, a <laughs> hell of a front man. Nobody could take their eyes off me. But uh, if I was ever in key, it was it was just good luck if I ever stayed in key, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine for punk rock and hardcore. But uh, I, you know, art is where it's about. So, and I, I think what you do is fantastic because, quite frankly, you know, in the uh, mid '90s, 
when I was pursuing an acting career, uh, the uh, I wanted to be an entrepreneur as well, and I said, okay, let me let me uh, pursue business, and this way I can pursue my acting career, let me be, be successful in, in business, and then I can pursue my acting career at, you know, at my leisure, not have to be a starving artist or, you know, waiting yeah. tables like all my colleagues. But what happened was I found out that business was so difficult to be successful in, and I, and I never got back to my acting, so I didn't pursue my acting career. Uh, and then, you know, I got back, I got into music, but but not, not because I was a musician, because I was a punk rocker. And punk rock, yeah. you don't have to love music necessarily as you have to love punk rock, which is just be about, you know, about an expression, especially quote unquote negative feelings. So, and then I, and I, and I, and I, I stopped with that too. You know, my, we were up and coming band in New York city and I, and then I, I gave up. So I, so I, I quote unquote failed in acting quote unquote failed in music. If I had a coach to help me, might have made the difference that made the difference and I might have stuck it out. Well, a coach, uh, at least my approach, uh, is um, seeing the gift in failure and, and go for, for opportunities. So at least that's how I live and that's how I try to help my clients um, to, to see when they feel they have failed in. I, I don't believe in failure. I yes. believe the only person we compete with is ourselves. And sometimes things have an ending just because it didn't work out. It doesn't mean it's not going to work out for something else and so on and so forth, you know, but I see everything, you know, uh, as a gift or an opportunity. Absolutely. You know, I'm, Where, a pra I'm a practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming and one of our major tenets is there is no, no failure. There's only feedback. What can you learn? What can you learn from what happened so that you can, be more successful or apply what you learned to avoid that mistake <laughs> again. Yeah, there are many different techniques. Uh, NLP is wonderful. Um, I would love to hear more about it. One technique I can share is um, whenever I have a negative emotion, I try to focus on my senses. For example, uh, something I hear like, to this morning, I had a negative emotion and I went for a walk and I focused on hearing my footsteps. It only takes 10 seconds for the brain to adjust. It works like magic. So I use my senses, hearing, seeing, uh, touching, and so on and so forth, smelling. Right. And, and that action brings the body back to the present moment. And over time, this practice creates neural pathways um, that uh, make uh, negative emotions uh, manageable. The brain is totally uh, manageable Absolutely. if we work it, if we work it. That's how we create mental fitness. Absolutely. The great mistake that a lot of people make is they think that their brain is in charge when that's absolutely untrue. <laughs> the brain is just the, the, the our organ that's that resides in our skull. So that, you know it's part of the neurological system. It is not the neurological system. The entire nerves of the body is just as much of it as the brain. But the brain, uh, it works for us. The mind is what's in charge. So what does the mind want the brain to do? That's the thing. And you just describe mindfulness, you know, uh, as opposed to thinking about a negative uh, uh, thought or emotion, which is mindful. The mindfulness is where it's at. Or you can just change focus, right? Stop, stop focusing on that negative feeling. Focus on something else. <laughs> yeah, it's called diversion in cognitive behavior. Yeah, yeah, it's another technique. Uh, very popular, very easy to use, and uh, our brains are ancient and undeveloped. So when we know that tiny detail, then we can shape it the way we want. That, that's great. So you, you are, you're a coach, but you also, were you a therapist or are you a therapist? I'm not sure. <clears throat> no, I'm not a therapist. I, I got into the coaching field from um, a desire to work in personal development. So mm -hmm. at some point in my life, I wanted to run a private practice and go back to school. I have a graduate degree in film and media arts. So at some point I decided 
I want to pursue my art. I want to practice therapy because I was much into it. And accidentally around 2012, I discovered coaching and creativity coaching, specifically uh, the work of Eric Maisel. I've heard the name. Um, so I went to his workshop at Rheinberg, New York. He was teaching uh, the deep writing workshop. And um, I, I we were about 30 writers and it was a wonderful experience. And, and I was sharing, I want to study therapy. And then he suggested try coaching. And I did, and it was wonderful. And I ended up graduating from the creativity coaching school, um, which is based upstate New York. It's an online program. Mm -hmm. And it's based on the humanistic approach to psychology, which assumes the, the individual is well immersed in managing themselves, assuming not a heavier condition that needs to see a psychiatrist. Because in the coaching field, we, we ask open-ended questions yes. for the client to come to their own co conclusions. We help them to go from point A to point B, but it's all a self-directed approach. We guide, we never tell the client what to do. And sometimes we have to wear a different hat, like the mentor hat or the yes. teacher hat. Absolutely. So, so I'm not a therapist. The therapist will analyze and, and discuss the past. I just go straight to the point here's the situation, what, what do you want to do to go from point A to point B? So absolutely. The way I see it is therapists help clients reconcile with the past coach, which I am, uh, help people focus on goals, which are in the future. But in order to go after the goals, you got to help them manage their states in the present. Uh, that's the way I see it. It's really simple for me. And the, exactly. lots of therapists are also coached now. They get certifications or they make a distinction. Here's my therapy hat, my therapist hat. Here's my coach hat. Okay. And with those different modalities. <clears throat> yeah, because, you know, coaching is an evolution from psychology. It's a branch of psychology. Absolutely. And I, I think it's, uh, it's doing a great job because <clears throat> people can handle their affairs when we have, you know, when they have good guidance. Right. Totally. Great stuff. Let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor and we'll come right back with Nefeli Sotarillo. This episode of Self-Help Coaching is brought to you by Perfizio. What if there was a self-improvement program truly personalized to you, that knew and cared for you deeply, that whatever was going on in your life adapted for you perpetually? Visit www.perfizio.io. That's P-E-R-F-I-C-I-O dot I-O, where you can start a program that will always suit you, considering all the pressures and nuances of your life. You are listening to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza. We're talking with Nefeli Sotariu, and we've established... Uh, coaching and, and uh, therapy. And now we're going to get into her business, which is, well, let's, let me ask you right out, right out. Talk about your own business model in coaching. Okay. So I graduated in 2016 and my background is, is, is in teaching. Um, and so I jumped into it uh, privately, seeing clients in New York City. Um, I started part-time, obviously, because I still teach you know and um my methodology is pretty simple um i talk to the client um we have a discovery session at first to understand if i can be of help let's say if it's an extreme case uh i refer the client to a therapist or a psychotherapist and um, if we're a fit, then we decide that we're going to work together. So you, 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 you're a teacher as well as a coach, and you no doubt integrate both. Both. You know, I, 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 I was a life coach, a personal development coach. Now I'm an entrepreneur, like I said, and, yeah. and I have this, this tech company. And we created this virtual coaching program, which is going to revolutionize self-help. And what does this, this program do? It helps, it helps 
teach a person because teaching is the thing learning is the thing we th that's the thing that every person must be a perpetual learner and, and mm -hmm. if it's nothing more than to learn how to solve a problem or whatever you need to know uh to know in order to accomplish a goal and so that's what and so we created this this virtual program called proficio which which is a automated self-help coach that lives on the e-learning platform but what is so the, the revolution is the is the, is the coaching but it's doing the the tried old necessary thing teaching uh, applying uh, applying its coaching so that a person continues to go to the teacher which is the self-help course so that they learn so like why why do they learn so they can learn what they need to learn to pursue their goals because that's where it's out goals i think that's I, we are human beings as opposed to human doings but a human <laughs> being that does nothing is going to be an unhappy person <laughs> so we've got to do things and we've got to do important and the more important they are the happier we are so that's the that's what we have that in common but i also know that you have a business model i want to talk about our business the business okay. model which you said you know how you how you work it you know i my business model i always you know i i was i used to work one-on-one -on -one, uh like you the a coach usually does but I created this new business model for my company, Auxilium, and to work with Proficio that I, I wanted specifically a win-win-win situation. One where I get content partners, people who have self-help courses, personal development courses, and I and I get there and they get their put their course on Proficio, uh, and which is just an automated self-help coach. And so that so the the client of the uh, will get everything that was advertise for that course it'll actually blow your mind you'll get everything you know if i love self-help but yeah. nefeli if if self-help worked i would have been a millionaire 20 years ago it doesn't work mm -hmm. or at least it needs a little bit more and proficio is that little bit more it's automated it's totally intuitive so they're going to get everything they want out of the course so they're going to win the <laughs> the course the creator is going to win because they will be happy with all the success of all their customers and 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 they their course will be acclaimed i'll win because i'm the intermediary so win 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 that's the, the only business model i'm interested so let's talk about your business model yeah so one question that came up before i answer this is when are you releasing it are you ready or <laughs> well we're, we're only two years behind schedule we have been undercapitalized typically uh, something like this takes at least a half a million dollars we've spent over two hundred thousand dollars, you know. I've had investors, and it's still we still need more. We're gathering, we're getting, we're getting more. I'm getting more capital, and we're still testing. We're still making adjustments, but I hope to launch in about a month from now. So if if we launch in April, it'll only be because God is really smiling on me, and I am blessed, like everyone in the world, I think, is blessed. <laughs> so. Um, you know stay tuned we're gonna let you know when we launch but uh it's gonna be a game changer and uh thank you for asking <laughs> congratulations so okay so going back to my business model as i said i start cautiously as a one person uh business yes. and uh part-time initially um so i focus on one-on-one -on -one guidance with individuals but then most recently about six months ago i opened it up to group uh, coaching for creators that want to that want to um, complete work um, one of my specialties is anxiety and so i understand the anxiety of completing work and, and um, i offer that remotely and um, my clientele usually is um, art students that graduated or art uh, enthusiasts. What, are, a, what are some of your approaches to artistic anxiety? Or you said, and, and this is about complete, uh, in regarding completed work, that's what you said. Completed yeah. Work. In regards to working uh, to complete work. Um, to complete work or having work, the work completed. Maybe that they're, they're thinking about so the, the block. The block is being unable to complete work, right? Okay. So there is procrastination. Okay, gotcha. I got you. Procrastination is complete, uh, is created because, so so sometimes projects pile up for years because, um, because clients are unable to just review them. 
So what we do, we schedule uh, time to review our work together and select out of, let's say, because creatives have tons of projects that are going on at the same time. So we select the most important ones. So it's, um, it requires a, organization and structure and uh, discipline. So we, together with the client, we create a schedule and it's an accountability partnership. Oh, fantastic, yeah. So clients check in for the goals they set and that's how uh, it unfolds. I just mix the two now, the individual and the group coaching. Group, group coaching is different because people come in with a project they want to work on and they just do it. Oh, that, that is, that's great. And you have that group dynamic. I mean, group dynamic is a special magic. Uh, but uh, you've talked about a, a few important things which I like to reply to. One, you talked about, you know, not completing or not knowing what to do. Procrastination, I contend, listen, the world has all, has all sorts of problems, personal pro and people have all sorts of problems. But I contend that the worst problem, universally speaking, is procrastination. We have all these things we want to do, and we do hardly any of them. <laughs> okay, so procrastination is the enemy, is the culprit. So when you have someone like you or me or any coach that can assist in someone in getting clarity, and then most importantly, just start acting because... Clarity is great, but you know what? Clarity comes from action. <laughs> it, the mind is always a nebulous, all right? You, you tell you, getting organized, awesome. Writing some things down, awesome. But acting, you know, uh, it's a funny thing. It's another great misconception that people have is that once they get motivated enough, then they'll start doing it. That does it, Motivation doesn't work that way. You can get about 1% of the motivation uh, to get started. That better be enough because you ain't going to get any more. Motivation comes when, after you get started, once you're acting, once you're moving, then you feel more and more motivated. If 1% ain't enough to get you started, you ain't never going to get started. You got to get started. And whatever resource you may have, self-help, personal development, a coach like Nefeli, a coach like me or whomever, get it because you got to get started. And, and, and we'll talk about the, the first thing you talked about, you know, the stress of, of, of you know, not completing some I also, I think there's all sorts of reasons for stress. Stress to me, I'm very fortunate, I'm very blessed, but I, I have stress in my life like, like everyone else. But I got to say that the thing that causes me the most stress, perhaps, is all the things that I didn't complete, that I didn't complete, all the things I started and never finished. That's what causes me stress. I walk around with it. I've worked through it. So I, it's mostly gone. But still, you heard it in my voice if you're perceptive that it could, you know, the things that I've started and not finished, I stress about those things. So a coach, especially another coach, as opposed to just practicing on yourself, uh, can help you move towards uh, pursuing a goal. You know, and it's in the journey. You know, we think that, oh, when I succeed, when I achieve this goal, everything's going to be so great. It's rarely ever that way. But pursuing the goal, it is great. Yeah, as you pointed out, inaction brings paralysis. And yes. we want to avoid that by, by even taking tiny action that, that makes sense to our goal. For example, I have a client who said they cannot, they don't have time to go to the gym or um, they're too busy, but then I encourage the client to just take a walk five minutes a day. And then over time, it becomes 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day. And over time, it becomes a habit for health and well being ultimately. So, inaction brings paralysis, and we don't want that. Absolutely. We want to take every tiny bit of small action and uh, devote to it. Absolutely. We're going to talk more about that once we come back from the sponsor's break. So let's just take a moment to hear from our sponsor. We're going to, get to talk more about how you support a client and other little, little things like taking a walk. Well, we'll, one moment to hear from our sponsor, and we'll be right back with Nefeli Sutario. This episode of Self-Help Coaching is brought to you by Perficio. Do you know why most wealthy people are that way? It's because they think like wealthy people, and a fool and his money are soon parted. Visit www.proficio.io 
That's P-E-R-F-I-C-I-O dot I-O, where you can actually transfer the wealth mentality into your own brain, and you will think wealth. You're listening to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast with me, your host, Tony Petroza. We're speaking with Nafeli Sotariu, and we're talking about coaching right now and her, how she coaches and some of the, the approaches, uh, how you... So, you talk about maybe just taking a, making a suggestion for a client to take a walk. How do you, how do you support a client such as that or whatever whatever other way? Um, there are different ways, but um, I'm available. So when we work together, I'm available not only for the monthly session. We meet once a month. We also meet via email or text. So I'm available to respond to their concerns um, right away. So I'm, I'm the backbone support for the client who wants to really make changes in their life. And that's so- let me, let me ask you something, Nefeli. So once a month, that's, not, that's, that's pretty infrequent. How long do you usually work with the client for? What's the general- longevity or the, the length of the period of the relationship it depends because i have worked with clients for more than one year mm. and i have worked with clients uh that completed their goals in two months it depends really on yes. the client because some clients are more motivated than others to right. see results and they come in and they're determined i want a career change Bum, bum, bum. We right. set the goal. Right. We, we start the work. We're in communication. In two months, the client is gone. They got the job they wanted or they got the promotion they wanted. So it happened to me. But then I worked with other clients that they told me too, I need my time. And so they need their time. I need to respect that and work with that pace. Sure. And that's okay too, because we're not all the same. Oh, absolutely. That's great. And that's great because, you know, I usually work with clients weekly, but uh, but never over, I think the longest was four or five months, you know, then they got what they needed and they moved on. But sometimes a lot, very often are people need a lot more than that, you know, and, and six months, a year with you being there for them, that, that could be what, just what they need is that, is that duration. Yeah. I had that too, the weekly session as well. I'm finding, I'm finding it depends again on the client, what their needs yes. are, what's the urgency. It mm. all depends on right. the situation. There's, there's a number of factors and you assess that. Yeah. Very good. But overall, in average, I do my session once a month and I'm available via email and text uh, constantly. Oh, like I return the call, the email or the text in the next 24 hours. Okay. Why come to a specialized coach like yourself and not hire a therapist or a life coach? Because we are a fit. As I said, at first, we're going to have our discovery call and discuss our, um, and the client will discuss their needs. And so if they are a creative person, um, then I can understand them. I, my background and my training, although I was a generalist in the behavioral sciences, I have found there too, when I worked at ABLE too, I was better helping the artist, the theater person who came to ABLE too for uh, therapy. It was a, so, so I discovered that too. It was a great experience working at ABLE too in New York City because- Tell me I about that, yeah. Yeah, I was a generalist in behavioral coaching. So the program was like eight weeks. The therapist went first to do their um, session. And then I followed the following week. So the therapist That's did great. the emotional. Yeah, yeah, it's a great program. I highly recommend it because the insurance covers it. Wow. So they start with therapy and a therapist and then it's followed by a coach in your coaching. It's a beautiful Fantastic. arrangement. What a great yeah, one so too. I love both. You know, I, 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 I often periodically was you know every like every year i would think about okay am i going to go to school and become a psychologist every, and i always said no and then i always came back and i decided no i'm not going to do that i'm just going to pursue entrepreneurial coaching because that's where it's at and that's what i want to do uh because but but because i i love therapy i love the value you know it's so valuable but you guys combine combine therapy and coaching in a program that yeah. is fantastic i never heard it's of very that in a program 
Yeah, it's very smart, um, very progressive. So the therapist or the licensed uh, social uh, social worker went in the first week and they did all the emotional coping of all sorts of things from depressions, uh, suicide, anxiety, you name it, amputation, cancer, diabetes. So they went the first week. And the following week, I went in for the practical aspect to help the client with a day-to-day, to do a meditation, a guided meditation if needed, to support them with the day-to-day practical stuff. And um, so I discovered there when I had a client who is creative, somebody who wanted to start a book and they couldn't do it with the therapist, Mm -hmm. I was the best person to help them start the outline of the book and, um, or a theater person who wanted to do video. I remember those clients, they came in and they, they had these needs and I was there to support that creativity, that need. That's the difference. So you are you you you've got to be an artist yourself, <laughs> right? So I mean that's pretty that's pretty obvious very quickly. You know, well, you know, let's talk more about that. But talk a little, I want let's talk a little bit more about uh, able to, and then we'll have a commercial break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about your art because I okay. know that well I know that's a that's a whole topic right there. So able to how long has able to been been around? I think maybe five, six years. It's yeah. a very progressive, it's a progressive trend. I think is it's great. great. I haven't heard yeah. of it. And I'm here in New York. So, you know, so, well, you know, stupid me, but uh, how many uh, do they have on staff? Or how big is the organization? I don't know that much. Uh, they are big. They are, they have offices in New York city. They have data scientists that work with them. They have the therapists and the social workers I really enjoyed my time there. That's and uh, they have all these remote workers from all over the United States. So, you know, because you need to be licensed in different states. So right. there is diversity there, but as a coach, I don't need to, but they were uh, generous. I got training in cognitive behavioral therapy through my work at ABLE too. And that increased my ability, my tools palette to service uh, clients. Very happy. Uh- I love CBT. Cognitive behavioral therapy is the, you know, the, we, I'm a, like I said, I'm a practitioner of NLP, neuro linguistic programming. CBT is is the is the therapy side of that. It's just like you know, CBT is like NLP, but you know that's actual therapy and, and uh, psychology that's taught in colleges. NLP is not taught in colleges, uh, but um, but the more and more NLP is recognized or, uh, you know, NLP is like a redheaded stepchild of psychology. You know, it doesn't get a lot of respect, uh, <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, but more and more it's, it's being acknowledged that, you know, that some of the methodology and techniques that, that comes out of NLP going back to the seventies and eighties is being used wow. by therapists and other psychologists today. Uh, and indeed, just as we said at the outset, more and more therapists are coaches to specifically by title because they recognize the value. We're talking about able to, which uh, this pro this great program from what I understand, where they start you off with a therapist and then you move over to a coach like Nefeli. That's that sounds that, that is seems to me like that's a great approach. And it was covered by it is covered by insurance. I'm sh- yep, yep, wow. totally. That, that sounds fantastic. And, and you know, I love it because I love how progressive New York is in, in mental health because, you know, they have the free suicidal hotlines as well, not just the companies that, that provide mental health. C- could you imagine, Nefeli, could you imagine they had, a, they had a suicide hotline that you had to pay for? Uh, hello, I want to kill myself. Uh, can you please give us your credit card information? <laughs> but, but, but you know what I mean? In some, in some countries, this is not yet established. They don't have it, right? right. Yeah, so social services are not yet established. And I mean, New York City is the place to be for yeah. social service. Yes. I, I say that because I also worked in my capacity as a teacher. I worked uh, at SAGE, which is a great organization for the LGBTQ elderly. You know, mm-hmm. this is okay. Uh, so I say that because I worked in community um, uh, places. Uh, 
like uh, New York Public Library. They offer uh, courses it. to to the elderly for free for creativity. Great stuff. You cannot find that anywhere aside New York, I think. New York has so many resources in so many areas. It's awesome. Great stuff. Okay, so we're gonna take our final, we're gonna take our final break. Uh, and then we'll come back with the last segment talking to Nefeli Sotarillo. This episode of Self-Help Coaching is brought to you by Proficio. Do you like learning by yourself or with others? What if you could do both at the same time? Visit www.proficio.io. That's proficio.io, where you can learn in the environment that suits you as you choose. listening to the self-help coaching podcast with me your host tony petroza we're speaking with nefeli sotarillo this is the final segment she we talked about her coaching and working with able to and a number of other things let's talk about art your art uh what you did or have done as an artist and i understand that you there's some films let's talk about your films uh so let's hear it Okay, so I love making films. I write them and produce them independently. I produce one every few years. It's a it's a joy I receive for you know from getting the story completed from start to finish. So I started with short form. I graduated from Temple University in two thousand six, the Department of Film and Media Arts, and I started with short form. And then gradually I went to feature length the longest i produced so far is 63 minutes whoa and i yeah and i have a goal you know to drop the esoteric artist that i am and reach wider audiences because i believe <laughs> every artist has ideas that sometimes the medium cannot express as much unless you master the medium you know and master it doesn't come immediately no. i mean I haven't met an artist that it was a genius right away. Even geniuses are not, you know, perfect right away, I right. think. <laughs> so I make narrative films. I write from personal experiences. My protagonist is always a female. It's always from the female perspective. I'm not necessarily a feminist. I'm just a person, a woman. <laughs> that you, happen, likes to... you happen to be a woman. So uh, yeah. let's see, you relate to the woman. <laughs> Let me figure that one out. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. Uh, so uh, my genre is usually family issues and uh, or social issues. And lately I decided to um, produce a comedy. I started the development of a script and this is a really tough task to do. But my goal is to reach a wider audience. And I think comedy is a way to go you know, to make it a universal thing. I never wrote a comedy. I don't know how long it's going to take me. <laughs> uh, I will be open for collaborations. That's not an issue. I'm always open to talk to other filmmakers that write as well. Um, but yeah, that's my goal. That's fantastic. I, I also love making films. Uh, I used to be in media production. I was nominated for a telly award for a commercial I made. And, uh, and I'm going to get, and, and it talked about being an artist. Uh, I have all these entrepreneurial aspirations and goals, but ultimately I want to get back in, into filmmaking, making films. That's my main thing. I want to have all these businesses working for me, but the business I want to focus on is, is, is making movies because that's where it's at. I just love expressing, you know, it's telling a story that's, that's heartfelt, yeah. that's, that's entertaining, uh, that's aspirate that, you know, inspires people uh, and with, with the positive message, uh, you know, so that's, we, we got a lot in common. <laughs> that's and, nice. And yeah. Let's talk, you know, let's just mention, you have some articles on, on Rutledge uh, and uh, talk about that. Yeah. So I, I said, I love writing. So I, I self-published a book for teachers in 2018 and then the opportunity came oh so that book was about you know first time teachers um and how to teach a course on filmmaking you know for people that don't know so it's very simple it's a very simple layout to comprehend so that's there and then the opportunity came uh wearing the hat of the coach 
to write um, chapters for books for Rutledge, which is a leading publisher in the humanities and social sciences. So I have four book chapters so far, and I have a fifth one coming up. They're mostly related on anxiety and how uh, a creative will cope with different issues. For example, dating and relating, that's one issue, and the anxiety that's created. Another one, as I Especially mentioned- Especially regarding filmmakers, right? Most of the time I'm targeting uh, creative filmmakers, yes. That's yes. great. Yes, yes, yes. Because that's my background. That's my backyard. Yeah, that you know it. That's great. So anyone who's a filmmaker and has any sort of anxiety, especially dating anxiety, we just talked about, check out. You know, well, we're gonna. She's gonna give her information in a moment. But you know, check, check out these articles and you know, in leading publishers too. So this has been a fantastic conversation. It's really been so colloquial. It's really, it was, you know, it was really just a wonderful conversation. I gotta say that in terms of the, the the flow of the conversation of just being between two people who have a lot in common and are you know have a, a, a they're experts in their field that it really flowed so gently and and, and organically I, I was very it was a pleasure for me I thank you very much and I understand you have some uh, free resources for our audience definitely I want to thank you Tony for inviting me this was a pleasure as well I'm loving it as well the conversation and uh, the inspiration for motivation towards others so um, people can find me at my website nefelisodirio.com any -E okay, go ahead, go ahead and spell it. I mean that's you're gonna have a profile page on our website by the way if you can go there it'll have all the yeah. information but go ahead and spell it Nefeli. yeah n-e-f-e-l-i-s-o-t-e-r-i-o-u.com you can find me there and then uh, for more um, educational resources my blog under inspiration um at my website has a ton of articles you can learn more to read more more motivational tips and also my youtube channel total behavioral and creation coach you can find me under nefeli sotiri total behavioral and creation coach and, and there are short snippets four minutes or less where i provide a lesson uh in motivation and encouragement Great. And you can also find her on Facebook. Uh, and that is Holisti Consultant uh, on Facebook and on Instagram, again, with her full name, Nefeli, Nefeli Sotariu. Uh, yes. And that's, oh, that's all, you, all you need for Instagram. But go check out, go to her website, which is nefelisotariu.com. Uh, and she has free resources for you. And, it, and it's a really very nice website, so I recommend it. You have been a wonderful guest. I really appreciate it. Do you have any, uh, you're quite welcome. Uh, do you have any final remarks for the audience? No, stay, no. stay calm. No. Enjoy, enjoy the day. Spring is coming. <laughs> yes. It was a brutal yeah. winter here in New York City, so, yeah, but also a, here. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's weather for you. Uh, this has been a great conversation. I really appreciate it. Uh, and remember, everyone, we're all responsible for ourselves and we can all use a little help. And with that, Nefeli, thank you very much for speaking with us. And we hope to see you next time on the Self Help Coaching Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Self-Help Coaching Podcast, where insights, attitudes, and methods for success get illuminated. Learn what leaders and change workers have done and are doing now to create magnificent futures. Remember to visit our website at self-helpcoaching.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Self-Help Coaching Podcast.